I was not disappointed at all. I loved my time playing this. You done did good, EA. You done did good. Final verdict for Star Wars Fallen Order is an 8 out of 10. Damn, it's so impossible. Why, EA? Eight out of ten. So EA is pretty much a terrible company, and they bought out Lucasfilms, which are responsible for some great Star Wars games. But as a kid and teenager, I was an idiot, and I wanted to play Battlefront EA wanted to. I enjoyed Battlefront 1 even though it missed out on what made the original so great with no Clone Wars and no story. Battlefront 2 gained a lot of controversy due to EA being so f***ing greedy. But over time, because of people not being happy with EA, they changed their ways for the better. I think. I mean, the original and EA Battlefront games aren't masterpieces, but they're fun! And when Jedi Fallen Order was announced, I was curious about this game, and as someone who watched the Rebels cartoon, I was looking forward to it seeing how the second sister is the main villainess of the game. My dad got the game for me as a Christmas gift, and I was waiting to do a playthrough of the game just like how I did the playthrough with Resident Evil games. Little did I know, I was gonna have a bad journey. You are no Jedi! No! I knew it wasn't gonna be like The Force Unleashed. But I was hoping that it would be good and interesting. But it just isn't. Like Into the Spider-Verse, this is overrated and I just hate this game. I'm sorry, but I am joining the dark side here. So sit back and prepare to dislike and comment on this video. Here's the title screen. It sucks plain and simple. Mostly because of the gray and lifeless background. That screams laziness. Cal is stuck on a planet with a bunch of people taking out part by part of the Republic Star Destroyers. But one day his friend was falling to his death and he has no choice but to use the force to save his friend whose name I can't remember. He daydreams for a bit and then the Empire tries to find the Jedi and Cal's friend ends up dying. Causing Cal to try and take out the second sister but fails to do so and end up fighting for his life. And no, I do not care that the actor played Joker in the Gotham TV show. He gets saved by a former Jedi named Seer and a pilot named Grease. With Cal, they have a chance to restore the Jedi Order, but they have to find a Jedi Holocron that contains the locations of the Force-sensitive children. But in order to get the Holocron, they have to follow the path of the dead Jedi Master named Endo Cordova. Along the way, over time, Cal restores his connection with the Force, and upon fighting the Second Sister the second time, we find out that this Inquisitor used to be a Padawan of Seer named Trilla, who was captured by the Empire after Seer reveals her whereabouts. Eventually, you head to Dithamir to get the next MacGuffin and come across the last Night Sister, Marin, who blames the Jedi for the death of her sisters, even though it was General Grievous that caused the massacre of the Jedi and is part of the Sith, but she can't seem to tell the difference, and she sent the Night Brothers and Night Sister zombies. No, I'm not even kidding. She uses her magic to resurrect the dead to attack Cal. Cause when I think of Star Wars, I think of zombies. Are you kidding me? What was he on when he wrote this? He comes across Malakos who pretty much fell to the dark side and lied to Marin about Jedi being scum. Even though he tries to seduce Cal to join the dark side, and Merit just so happens to be around when attempted to do so. I guess he not only has gone insane, but stupid as well. After fixing his lightsaber and returning, Merin is suddenly okay with Cal and helps him take down Malakos and collect the MacGuffin. She joins the crew which is fine, but we're in the third act and preparing to finish the game so it doesn't matter. Cal finally collects the holocron, but the second sister shows up again, and after fighting, he gets a lightsaber and gets a vision of the past, 
distracting Cal long enough to take the holocron. Cal and the gang head out to retrieve the holocron and defeats the second sister. But Darth Vader shows up and gives Cal and Sia trouble and kills off the second sister for failing. They got lucky enough to escape and get back to the ship. Now they have the holocron, they wonder whether or not it would be worth putting the children in harm's way and restoring the Jedi Order. Cal then decides to destroy the holocron and the game ends proving our journey to be completely worthless and not at all adding anything interesting to the lore. <sighs> what was the point of going on this journey then? Gosh, I hate it when characters go on a journey and in the end it's meant for nothing! Look at The Last of Us, the journey to get to the Fireflies was for nothing, but Joel learns to love Ellie like her daughter by the end, so it wasn't exactly for nothing. What the hell did the story add to the lore other than just fan service and easter eggs? What made Battlefront 2's story so interesting despite not being the best is that it took place during and after Return of the Jedi. You are experiencing what the Empire is doing afterwards and how they have finally fallen. The story? It's just there. It doesn't take anything away, but at the same time, it doesn't add anything other than LOOK! IT'S THE INQUISITORS! EVER WATCH STAR WARS REBELS? The characters are either okay or just forgettable, there's nothing interesting added to the lore, and they make pathetic attempts to add fan service and easter eggs. The second sister... Okay, at first, she is kind of like the seventh sister in the Rebels cartoon, where she has an unsettling vibe, even if we saw her face. And she is the main villainess of the entire game. But when she took off her mask after the second time we fight her, now she suddenly feels like a generic villain that feels like the Arkham Knight from the last Batman Arkham game. Not as bad, mind you, as she doesn't go on and on about Seer, but still. And now is a good time to bring this up. Most of the women in this game just looks ugly. Look at Seer, she has those big bug eyes, and this is on the PlayStation 4, just... EW! In fact, even my dad thinks the same way when he watches me play the game for the first time. I waged one meaningless Padawan against a prize that will win me the Emperor's favor. PUT YOUR MASK BACK ON! And also, the graphics is nothing special, even on the PlayStation 4. Look at God of War 4. This came out before and it looks better. In fact, wait a minute, Uncharted 4 is 2016 and it looks better and has better designs for the women. There's not really much to say about the story other than it's nothing worthwhile. So Jedi Fallen Order is an action adventure game and let's make it perfectly clear. I love the Force Unleashed games and I know that we're not gonna have a game just like the Force Unleashed. You are not a powerful Sith slash Jedi. You are a Padawan whose connection to the Force is severed and you are restoring the connection throughout the game. I don't have an issue of this being different. Let's just start off by saying that the movement and jumping just feels stiff and heavy. And the way Cal runs, it's just weird. Seriously, he looks like a cartoon character who runs differently just to make himself look like a fool. Can you really take this running animation seriously? Which moon is more serious and believable? This? Or this? Get back there, you little brat! <laughs> this game is apparently inspired by the Uncharted games because Cal climbs like Nathan Drake and you explore like an Uncharted 4. But those games pretty much win by default because the movements are much faster and there is fun dialogue when exploring. When climbing, Cal just slows down when it comes to jumping across. There's always a delay, which sucks. Nathan Drake can jump across in a good flow. Now later in the game, you can get some climbing claws, which makes you climb a bit faster, but jumping to go a bit faster? Nah, that issue's not fixed. When you go through the game, you can unlock shortcuts. Okay, good. But the one shortcut which sucks is the elevators. This sh should take less than half a minute, or just half a skippable cutscene. For the love of gosh, it takes two minutes long! Longer than the f low times in this game! When traveling throughout planets in the ship, you pick a planet you want to go to, and the ship will take you there. Pretty simple, but it takes you f forever. You have to wait until you go to light speed, 
and I have to sit down after a minute of waiting. It should take like 10 seconds. The soundtrack is just forgettable and bland, and I just wish they used the OST from the movies more often. They do use the prequel music, but it's a rare occurrence. And the Force Unleashed music has some good original music whenever they don't use the soundtrack from the movies. So what the f happened here? Just what the hell is this sh If there are people who say the soundtrack feels like it fits with the movies, they are f morons! This is just as bad as the remake Ratchet & Clank music! When you go through the game, there are points throughout the map where you can meditate. This is where you regenerate health and stems and upgrade your abilities. But for the love of gosh, if you regenerate, you end up having enemies respond! And then there's the combat, the most important thing of all game. I barely had fun with fighting in this game. It's one thing to try and be smart and dodge out of the way in time, but ultimately I end up hating its guts because the enemies you fight are some of the most brutal enemies I have ever fought. Even if you try to master the parry button or get out of the way in time, the game feels like it's unresponsive with the parries and I swear there are times where even if I managed to get out of the way in time, I ended up getting hit regardless. It also doesn't help that your combat is limited. Now, when you have the option to head to a different planet for a story mission, you could go to Defamir if you want or continue the story. I went over there because I wanted to find something worthwhile, and I got one of the extra stims, which I'll get into later. I got as far as this part before I had to go back to my ship. I have to unlock the double jump move first. But before leaving, Cal actually creates a double bladed lightsaber, which is meant to clear out a room of enemies. Sounds fun, right? Well, they f***ed it up! I attempted to clear a room many times, and I just get hit many times, and I barely make any progress with killing enemies. Plus, for some stupid reason, you don't deal as much damage with one lightsaber! I d I d what A lightsaber? One of the most awesome things ever on the planet? And the galaxy beyond doesn't deal out as much damage in double bladed mode. I'm sorry, that is just f stupid! Only thing worthwhile with the double bladed lightsaber is that if you parry blast of fire, you can reflect a huge amount of firepower to multiple enemies, which is cool, but seriously? You know what you should have done instead of not dealing as much damage? If the double bladed lightsaber actually feels heavy and kind of slows you down a bit. That would have made sense! Also, the game has a missed opportunity handed to them in the third act of the game. When you rebuild your lightsaber, you can separate the two of them just for a special attack. That's it. You can separate your lightsabers and use the two of them whenever you want, but only for a special attack. What the f This should have spiced up the game more than a bit with having two lightsabers, but no, it's just there for a special attack, which is worth jack It shouldn't have been there at all. The boss fights. Oh, do I hate the boss fights in this game and how I dread them. The first and second fight with the second sister, okay, it actually fits in context. But aside from that, I f***ing hate the bosses. Why? Because despite memorizing their patterns and knowing when to dodge or block, I die. Every. Single. Time. Whether it's them attacking way too fast or just bullshit happening, I end up dying over and over and over again. And that's not fun at all! It's one thing to be bad at a game or there's something you have to figure out for yourself, but for f sake, knowing what to do and yet failing to do so is the worst!
Also, what doesn't make sense is that the Inquisitors are like the Jedi Hunters that mean business. And yet, I managed to fight the Ninth Sister right before fighting Trilla the third time. Shouldn't they all be equally powerful or something? She's just there to be a bad guy in the background and to be defeated. No personality. If anything, she just reminds me of The Force Awakens. And when you die, the game punishes you for it because of the f low times. The low times are kryptonite. And they are just as bad as Sonic 06 loading screens. Yes, Sonic 06 loading screens. If I'm making comparisons with one of the worst games in history, which I kind of liked, I know, I'm an idiot, that is not a good sign. At a certain point, the game, for no reason other than to annoy you and anger you even further, just starts sending in bounty hunters. You will either get lucky and defeat said bounty hunters, or you will die because they caught you off guard. It's not like they are a new threat you have to defeat in order to regress. They show up at a specific location when they feel like it. After you die, they don't show up. But after coming back to said area, they come back. And after dying again, you don't show up. This doesn't add anything! You don't fight a mob boss to stop these bounty hunters. You don't get anything. It's just annoying! And for some reason, only the prequel OST action music plays when facing these guys. Really? And if I hear a person say they are sick of the Star Wars games using the John Williams soundtrack over and over, then f*** those guys. Because I rather listen to their iconic music pieces over and over again than the generic forgettable scores! Now, there is a little mechanic that has a white bar. When attacking, the white bar goes down. But if left unattacked, it slowly gets back up. If the white bar is strange, it leaves the bad guys open for attack. And that would be great if it wasn't for the fact that after one or two small hits, they instantly go back to blocking and the bar refills. They should be completely vulnerable for like three seconds. Not just so you could get a spare hit or two. Also, just like Ratchet and Clank Remake, the enemies do not shut up. I can't get a good hit. Can't escape us. I think you're scared! Fight him, cowards! Just you and me, traitor! Compare this with the previous Star Wars games, even the Force Unleashed, they just feel the need to say stuff like when you defeat an enemy. Now, it's not as bad as Remake Ratchet, and there is a nice touch that they range from cocky to terrified, but I prefer they don't talk too much! Once in a while, there is an occasional set piece that actually is pretty fun. There's one part where you take control of the at you have a flashback to the point where Order 66 was issued, which is one of the few parts where they use the John Williams music by the way. And my favorite is after you defeat the second sister and have to run away from Darth Vader. Now some people may be disappointed that we can't have a boss fight with him, but you know what? I actually really like this part. You just finished a grueling battle with a Sith Inquisitor. Just tired and on low health. But then a Sith Master comes down and you are not capable at all to fight him and have no choice but to run away. This actually makes sense in context. Hell, even the survival guy says to get the fuck out. Which, by the way, is pretty damn funny. You have to be a Jedi Master like Obi-Wan or even Starkiller to survive. But you're not. You are a Jedi Padawan turned knight trying to survive. On top of that, the game showcases how powerful he is. And the music from Episode 3 really sells it. Granted, with how powerful Vader is, I can't help but think why Cal doesn't die while running away right here. But who cares? It's the best part of this shit game. Some of the puzzles, especially the tombs, they're somewhat enjoyable to figure out and solve. I say somewhat because there are times where I'm either stuck or end up having to go a long way back up with no shortcuts because I fell down a few floors. Also, these tombs is where you partially restore your connection to the force. 
aka unlock new abilities which honestly is kind of dumb because i feel like i should have gotten these right off the bat just not as strong as it should be now two new things this game does you can run across walls and force pull a vine or cord to swing across areas that is actually pretty cool and creative but unfortunately you barely feel like a jedi in this game there's no force sprinting which would have made traveling less repetitive you can't make a cool landing or fall down slowly and all the crap thrown at you takes away the feeling of being a jedi what would have redeemed a lot of this is if it was also a shooter you carry both a blaster and a lightsaber it would have been interesting and a whole lot of fun i mean being a Jedi who uses a gun? Come on, that would be very cool and interesting. Take note, EA, if you're gonna make a sequel, make this a hybrid game where you can use both a blaster and a lightsaber. And despite the game being about exploration, there's barely a reason to explore other than to increase essence and increase amount of health. I don't give a shit about different skins. I just want to become more stronger. Do you want to know a video game that gives you good reasons to explore? God of War 2018. It's an RPG gear style based system. You go around collecting money, explore to get special runics or to increase health, and items to craft and upgrade armor. There are enemies that are stronger than you, and you have to get the armor at the right level to even the odds. And there are different perks. I want to explore so I can collect stuff that matters and become stronger. Not give myself a fancy style of clothing or learn stuff from the past that doesn't even matter. On top of everything, the locations are lifeless and dull to explore. It's boring to explore the galaxy. It just makes me want to move on and get the game over with as soon as possible. The health stands in the force echoes that can increase health and force bars is the only reason to explore and even then there's barely out there i got one of the extra stems and i've been wondering where the fuck most of them are as i've been trying to look for them when given the chance to explore in fact let's look it up how many of them are there Bruh. after finding out the information i gave up hope for humanity and completely joined the dark side because of how much of a train wreck this game is. Did anybody play Legend of Zelda, more specifically Twilight Princess? After you go through a dungeon and defeat its boss, you have a heart container that increases your health by one. And don't blame me, blame the game and its map for not telling you if there's an extra stem or even a force echo that gains an essence that could have made the journey a whole lot of easier. There isn't even a new game plus. Meaning if you somehow like playing this garbage, you have to start all over again. With weak ass health and locked abilities and end up having a rough time with the bad guys and inquisitors again. This game is one of the most overrated, unfun, unbalanced, unforgiving, unfun, unplayable games I have ever played in my life. And this is before Resident Evil 5! The puzzles and tombs are okay, there's a few cool set pieces, and having to explore could work. But this game is just impossible! The locations are lifeless and dull to explore, the combat mechanics is based on pure luck, the enemies are extremely unforgiving even on normal, and I do not feel like a Jedi in this game at all! I am so f happy I got this at a console instead of PC because I did not want my Steam account to be tainted with one of the most overrated games in the planet. If you are rolling your eyes because I was expecting this game to be like the first Unleashed, well, I wasn't expecting this game to be like those games because this game is advertised with you being a Jedi Padawan, so I don't see how you can be the canon equivalent of Starkiller. There is a game I love besides the Force Unleashed games. Star Wars Episode 3 for the PS2. That is one of the few good movie licensed video games like Spider-Man 2. You can do cool things like throw a lightsaber, force dash, heal, and unlock combos. 
even more faster than this game. And I know you can throw a lightsaber here, I just never felt the need to use it. Or that there's sections required for you to throw a lightsaber. It's just an optional upgrade to unlock. Which sucks. Star Wars Episode 3 The Game isn't a masterpiece. But this game is a thousand times better than Jedi Fallen Order. And I'm baffled that a lot of people are enjoying this game. I'm sorry, but even though EA is learning not to be greedy bastards with microtransactions that caused quite a bit of controversy a couple years back, I just prefer to play the other EA Star Wars titles over this one. EA may have the right idea, but the execution just leaves me disappointed. If you never played this game, do not get it, you will suffer a lot. If you have this game and enjoy it, then I feel sorry for you. Stop pretending that this brutal game is fun and worthwhile. Just f stop it. It's not worth it. And now, I have officially joined the dark side of the force. Thanks, EA. And if you enjoyed this video and actually agree with me about this game being brutal and sh please f like and subscribe to my channel. And don't make me do that again. I am never playing this game ever again.